Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're back out the range with the SIG P365XL. But on top, you'll notice I have the new Romeo Zero red dot sight, which is a reflex sight very similar to, say, an RMR or a Delta Point, with the exception that this one's much smaller. And if you look at it on the gun, it seems to fit the rather small dimensions of the P365XL. This sight was built specifically for this gun. The gun released first, and then the sight just recently became available. I picked it up from our local uh, gun shop. They had it priced at $189, which I can only imagine was full retail. Um, they knocked a few bucks off for me, so the sight realistically is probably around $160 sight. So the price is right and it's built specifically for the XL. If you carry an XL for self-defense or if you just like shooting yours, you might wanna consider it. So what we're gonna do is start shooting it this afternoon. This is our first range session with the sight. I'm gonna to try to get my hands on a second one. It's very hard to get, get a hold of these right now. And we'll perform some drop tests and other things like that and compare it to more durable sights that we know are durable, I should say, like the RMR. The RMR is probably the industry standard for sights such as this. This one, its entire body and housing is completely made of plastics or polymers. So um, it's different. It's good in that it's lightweight, but the question stands just how durable is a red dot sight where everything is made out of polymer that protects it, including the hood here. And I believe the lens is some sort of a, a polymer as well, not glass. So it keeps it very lightweight, but there's questions of durability, which we'll hopefully address in a future video. Hopefully not this one. I'm just gonna shoot the gun today. If I break the sight by shooting it, then we're gonna have some real problems with durability. But I took the sight out, put it on the gun. I would love to show you how it installs. It's actually very simple, uh, but I can't do that because of YouTube policies. I cannot show you how to modify a weapon to make it more deadly. Uh, so yeah, you just have to take my word for that, that the installation is super simple to do when you put it on your 355. Uh, 365 XL. So uh, let's get started doing some shooting. I'll explain some of the features of the red dot sight and how it's integrated and intended for the P365 XL. Um, something that I think is really cool. All right, so let's head over to the firing line and do a little bit of shooting. So my P365XL is set up for carry. I have a TLR6 light on here. This is the laser light combo. I'm not a fan of lasers on pistols, so I don't have it enabled on here. I'm just using it for the light because for the P365XL, when I got it, you couldn't get it without the laser. I have some Talon grips on here. And then you, as you can see, the Romeo Zero fits on here and looks like it belongs on the pistol because it's very small, as is the overall gun itself. Now, the one thing I don't like about this gun is the fact that it has this forward swept trigger. And I'm, once again, I'm reminded that uh, I'm wearing some very thin mechanics cold weather gloves. We actually uh, have a link to these over on Amazon in the first description that's pinned down below the video. But I, I wear these when it's cold outside, but they're very thin, okay? Even with that, you can see my finger starts pushing on that trigger when I'm trying to wiggle it in. And that's one of the things I don't like about the Glock 19 and one of the reasons I stopped carrying it. And I'm reminded of that with the P365XL, but I'm pretty sure you can take the standard trigger of the P365, drop it in here and get rid of that forward swept trigger. It would give you more room in your trigger guard for a gloved hand. It's something I may look into doing to this handgun. Cause again, I really like this handgun. We have well over a thousand rounds for this thing and it has worked flawlessly for me. Today we are using some Federal 124 grain Syntec. This is range ammunition. This is low lead emissions. It's you know not gonna spark. It's, it's really good range ammunition. It's affordable, but the guys at Federal do supply us with the ammunition for free, and they support the channel that way by supplying all that ammunition. So we'd like to thank our friends at Federal for doing that. All right, so we have a challenge target that's about 20 yards away. And like I said, the sight on this thing was dead on right out of the box. So let's do some shooting. I have to be careful about how I force my really force my trigger finger in there and that tail r6 may not be helping at all and uh, let's do a little shooting here on mr challenge target
All right. <laughs> I mean, that trigger fits in the uh, glove fits in that trigger so tightly that it's like hanging on my trigger finger. All right, so spot on. Now, here's one of the things I really like about this red dot sight. It has a rear V-notch cut into it, and I put it on the gun. Can't promise this is going to happen with every gun and every red dot sight. I had, had to make no adjustments. It was shooting point of aim, and the dot on the sight works perfectly with the front sight and this rear sight notch that's molded into the polymer body of the zero sight. Nice touch. You lose the, the tritium because that's not part of the, uh, the Romeo. You still have that tritium front, which in my opinion is the most important, but it's nice that it has that sight feature built in. And with mine, everything zeroes out perfectly. So the sights and the dot are all working in conjunction with each other. And that makes me a very happy camper. All right, so let's grab another magazine here. I don't, I, I really hate that Ford swept trigger with gloves on. That sucks. Try my sights here. Hitting the exact same spot with the sights, the iron sights. I just ha barely have enough room for the trigger to reset with that, that glove trigger finger. I mean, again, guys, it's, uh, it's really, really tight. All right, so <laughs> I know what you're going to say in the comment section about that comment. Oh, you guys are so predictable, but I enjoy your comments so much. Let's grab another magazine here. I think I've already said this, but... Uh, no failures with this gun whatsoever. With any of my P365s that haven't broken in some way, their functionality with just about every ammo type has been spectacular. This is one of the 15 round magazines. So you can see how it just sticks out of the pistol grip just a little bit further. Let me take that glove off just to shoot this video. Hopefully you guys can hear that target down there. It rings differently when you hit the center section. It has like a little lung and throat and then a tee box in the head. If you hit it anywhere where it's white, it's a harmonic plate and it rings differently than if you hit the black area, it'll give you more of a dead thud. If you hit the lungs or the throat or the tee box in the head, it'll give you a ringing sound that you can easily pick up with electronic ears. I don't know if that's translating to my lav mic. The recoil on the 365XL is so manageable. It's just a, a spectacular gun. I, I think that um, you don't have any of the, the striker drag we talked about in, in previous videos. You have extreme reliability, reduced recoil impulse because the extra weight, and it's not so big that it's you know less less friendly for carry than the regular P365. I truly think this is the ultimate evolution of the P365. I, I like the original gun, but when this XL came out, I was extremely excited and it has not disappointed me. Um, the only problem I've had so far really was just a little bit of rust on the slide, but I took care of that fairly quickly by just cleaning it up and it's gone away. So, yeah, and even with the gloved hand, I'm not, I mean, the controls on this thing are really, really good for me. The way I hold the gun, uh, it stays, that's the slide stop slide release stays out of the way of my thumbs forward hold, and the slide locks open every single time. I like how the light works with my index finger. So, yeah, everything about it, I really, really like. And that sight looks really, really sharp on there.
What's interesting about the site, again, it's made out of what SIG calls weapons grade, and they've trademarked the name polymer. I don't know what that means. They've textured it, and the texturing on the sides of the Zero match that of the P365XL, but you can't see that on this handgun because I have talon grips on here. Um, they have a Spectra coat, another trademark, lens on the site, and they claim that it's 10 times more durable than traditional glass lenses used in other optics out there. I find that to be an impressive claim. I don't know where they come up with the number 10 times, but I plan on getting a second one of these sites. I'm going to keep this one just to shoot it and test durability that way. I'm going to get another one when we're going to do drop test comparing this to what I believe is the gold standard, the RMR, and see if it is truly as durable or more durable than an RMR. And I'll tell you right now, a Type 2, I've never been able to break one. So uh, yeah, we have that going on. Now also, it cla they claim that it has a 20,000 hour battery life, which is good, but then later in the documentation, it claims a 10 year battery life. And then that may be because it has a system in here that detects motion. When the site detects no motion, it goes to sleep and turns the dot off. When it detects motion, it turns the dot back on. Now at night, when it's laying in a bed stand safe or something like that, it's gonna turn itself off until you pick it up should you need it. If you're carrying this thing around every day, obviously the site's gonna stay on because you're moving about and the site's gonna detect that motion. So with all that being said, let's do some more shooting with this bad boy. Now the dot on this is three MOA. And that's nice. And it has a very defined dot. Now on the RMR, which I like, one of the things I don't like about the RMR is the dot tends to bloom very easily. This thing, you can adjust the brightness settings with eight daytime visible settings. And you can do that with a little button that's inside. So you have to reach inside the lens and push a little button. That's how you're gonna turn it off. That's how you're gonna turn it on. And that's how you're going to adjust your brightness settings. All right, you gotta reach in there and push the button. For two seconds, we'll turn it on. Another two second hold, we'll turn it off. And just tapping it multiple times will cycle between your brightness settings. Yeah, I really, really do like the dot on it. It is a very nice dot. It's very sharp and crisp and well-defined, and it picks up very easily. Now, a lot of folks will struggle with the red dot sight like this, and that's because they tend to, tend to hold the gun either high or low when they're searching for the dot. What I tell folks when they're first trying to learn how to use a red dot sight, and this helps and aids in doing that because it has a rear sight built into it, go for your rear sight picture that you normally would pick up when you draw your pistol, and the dot will just magically appear. So you're not hunting around for a dot. You just pick up your sight picture and boom, there's your dot. Now, if you're considering a handgun like this for concealed carry, I like the concept of a red dot sight on a handgun. I truly believe that's the future. I also have said on social media, I think closed systems like the new <clears throat> Aimpoint Acro is the next evolution of these open sights. It's a closed system, which makes it more durable and completely impervious to snow, rain, mud, blood, dirt, sand, whatever. This is a completely open system. You have your emitter back here and a lens up here, and it's, it, it's emitting the dot from back here through open air onto the lens. If I put a pinch of dirt inside of there, the dot goes away. If I drop this on the ground and dirt gets inside there, sand or anything else, the dot goes away. So that's the reason why you haven't seen sites like this in widespread use in military circles or especially in law enforcement where somebody might carry the weapon exposed in an open duty type holster. But if you're carrying this under concealment, it's gonna be protected from most of that stuff. When you draw the weapon and go to use it, Unless you get into a tussle on the ground, it's not really gonna become an issue. So for concealed carry, I do like the concept and I have used sites like this in the past. I can't say it's the best. I'm really hoping that sites will start to evolve more towards the acro direction 
than this open system like SIG has used with the Zero. I really wish SIG would have been a little bit more forward thinking and brought out a sight this small, but sealed up like the Acro. But once again, Aimpoint's leading the way and everybody's gonna be several years behind it seems. Yeah, I think you guys will like the site. Looks like I've already put a little bit of a nick into it. I know you can scratch it. Um, they, again, they talk about how durable it is. We're gonna do some drop tests when I get the second one. Uh, you know, D uh, Jason and I were looking at this. The, the lens is obviously, uh, appears to be glued inside there. And I'm really worried if you drop it really hard or you, you, you know, rack it off a metal table, rack it off a bumper on a car, rack it off a tree. I wanna see how it's gonna hold up. I'm not gonna make any predictions to durability. SIG makes some pretty big claims about how strong it is as compared to competitive products. So we're gonna see, and we're gonna do the exact same tests to the, the uh, RMR and see how they compare. Love that target, music to my ears. Yeah, so far, I'm, uh, I'm liking how the sight works on the handgun. Very, very interesting. And I'm not gonna make any judgments about that polymer until we do more destructive type testing to find out just how it's gonna hold up. But it certainly doesn't add any weight to the handgun whatsoever. Not noticeable anyway. And it certainly doesn't impede function in any way. This part of the video is the very last segment we filmed today. I'm gonna to go ahead and let you guys see the original outro or the original ending of the video immediately after this segment. So my initial impressions obviously of the site were very, very positive. And something happened after we had stopped filming for the afternoon. We shoot this thing called B-roll and, and that's non-talking bits of video that will roll in to add you know, texture to the video, if you will. And so, we were done filming, the gun was empty, as it is now, had a 12 round magazine in it. And I said, hey Jay, shoot some B-roll. And I just threw the gun over on the ground like that. And so he could then go over and adjust it and film it. And I was gonna clean up some of the mess that we had made this afternoon. So after we were done shooting all that B-roll, we had a few extra rounds left over. And I thought, well, let's go ahead and shoot and finish off this ammunition. And when I shot, you can see, and I'm shooting from this distance, which is about 20, 25 yards. My group on that man-sized target had moved significantly to the right. Now, the head of that target was us trying to re-zero the site after it had gone wildly to the right and it was shooting considerably low. So I re-zeroed it and then did some accuracy tests. And then I really decided what the heck, let's get really abusive. And I was slamming the gun onto what's relatively soft ground so hard in one instance, it actually locked the slide to the rear on an empty magazine. And then we went back. And if you take a look at the challenge target with the T box in the head, so you have the central nervous system there in the lungs and the T box, I, uh, I was basically got the site re-zeroed even after really throwing the thing on the ground quite hard. And so that's where we're going to leave things. And now I'm going to show you guys the original outro to the video, but I wanted to give you that update because we did see a wild shift in the point of impact from just simply throwing the gun on the ground. I did tighten the screws down on the site and you don't want to over tighten them because you literally can crush those, that, that polymer housing. You can over tighten those screws, just snugged them up, make sure they were tight. That wasn't the issue and then re-zeroed it and seems like it's holding zero now, okay? So let's show you the original outro to this video. So far today, we've put just a little over 400 rounds through the handgun. We've only used one type of ammunition, but I think I've already well established that the P365 series of handguns will feed anything you put into them. So I'm not so much worried about that. The sight though, that's what I'm worried about. How's the sight performing so far today? Flawlessly. I'm actually quite impressed with it. Uh, I did some testing where I take a look through the sight with the sun in front of me, off to my side, either side, and see if I get any type of garbage in the, um, in the view of the, the red dot sight. And many times, even with the RMR, the emitter and the circuit boards and stuff like that will project onto the lens when you got sun coming directly into it. 
and it'll give you kind of a garbage sight, which can be distracting or even confusing with some red dot sights. With the Romeo Zero, the worst I got was a little tiny dash that just moved back and forth, and that was pretty much with the sun straight over my head and me shooting this way with the sun like that, and it wasn't distracting at all. The dot was there, easily uh, picked up, and I liked it. So, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Now, with the polymer body, do I like that? No, I don't. I wish it was made out of aluminum, but I'm going to give it a chance. Polymer doesn't necessarily mean bad, and um, yeah, so we're going to see how she holds up. We're going to be kind of brutal to one of these sites. I want to get a second one, and I've, as I said already in the video, we're going to see how it handles running the slide off various things, trees and you know, bumpers off the Jeep and whatever else we can find. And we're gonna drop test it and see if it truly holds up to SIG's claims of being super durable with their weapons grade polymer. I hope it does because it certainly fits the part. The price is right, everything seems to be great. And the you know, nice crisp dot, all that good stuff. One thing I did notice about the site when it's putting it on the gun, it says assembled in the USA. And I did some research into that. And in essence, that's deceptive marketing. What that means is the site was most likely made somewhere overseas, I'm gonna guess China, but it's pure speculation. And then when they get the parts into the United States, they can put them together and claim assembled in the USA, but they don't tell you where the parts are actually made. Also, according to some of my friends in the optics business, they can claim that all they have to do is basically put even the battery in, but the battery's not in the site when you get it. But something as simple as just putting the battery in it, can they can claim that it was assembled in the United States. It doesn't mean you have to assemble 100% of the parts. So those of you guys that are worried that you know Chinese optics are bad, which I don't believe is true. Primary Arms is a site I use quite a bit and they're made in China. I like them quite a bit. So some of you that might be worried about being made in China, that might be the case with the site. We don't know because SIG has just put assembled in the USA on the site, which is hiding something. So for me, not that big of a deal. I like my iPhones, they work great, and they're made in China. All right, guys, 2020 has arrived. 12 years of you guys watching the channel. Thank you. We passed 1 million subscribers on Christmas Eve. It was a magnificent Christmas present from you guys to us. Thank you very much. If you would like to support us so we can continue to bring you unbiased as humanly possible information like in this video, there's several ways you can do that. First of all, there's a little join button right underneath the video player right here on YouTube. You're not gonna see it on the mobile apps, unfortunately, but in a proper web browser on an iPad or a similar device or on a desktop or laptop, you'll see that join button. Click that button, take a look at some of the tier levels and some of the perks that are associated with them and consider supporting us here at the Military Arms Channel. Another great way to do it is to become a Patreon supporter. There is a link down below. Follow that link and check it out once again. Last but not least, be sure to check out coppercustom.com. All right, guys, we're gonna sign off for now. We'll talk to you guys soon.